Thank you, Abby, for that wonderful message of inclusion. Uh, following up from that, it is my distinct pleasure to welcome Raj Narendra Kaur, uh, representing the Sikh faith here. One of her honors is that she was the founder of the Rutgers University uh, Sikh Students Association almost 30 years ago. And we are really honored that she's part of us today, Raj Narendra Kaur. Wai Kuchi Ka Khalsa, Wai Kuchi Ki Fateh, Assalamu Alaikum. I want to start by saying that I am not prepared as the rabbi and the reverend, um, as I'm a last minute replacement. Unfortunately, the individual that was going to speak from the Sikh community um, fell ill. So I was called in. I live right down the street, so it's very convenient. Um, so that's why I'm here today. I'm honored to be here, and I really um, thank the opportunity for the Sikh representation. Um, the persistence that they showed me in, within the hour, I was like, you have to come. So I said, okay. Um, I literally just dropped off my boys at the wrestling, um, they wrestled for Monroe, wrestling back then, and then came here. So I have one son here. Um, interfaith dialogue, so I pinned down my, my notes here, so I'm going to be looking down. Um, interfaith dialogue creates a spirit of understanding others, respecting everyone, peacefully, living together, and collectively helping each other. Sikhi represents this model at all levels, an acceptance of others as members of the wider human race who all deserve equality and respect. I do voiceover work and had the pleasure, the honor, and the opportunity to do um, voiceover for a movie that we presented to the Parliament of World Religions at the UN last October. And that, overall, and I think many of you may have seen this during COVID, there were so many, around the world, so many opportunities that the Sikh community gave langar, they gave food to those that needed it. Right now in the Ukraine, the same thing is happening. We're going out and giving food. But the Sikh community doesn't stop just at food, right? Um, in India, there is a shortage of oxygen. We have a pilot from the UK who got dozens, dozens of oxygen tanks and flew it over to give oxygen to those in need in India. The Gurdwaras opened up their doors to serve as makeshift hospitals. One more which staggered my mind was cremation seva. No one wanted to cremate those COVID-ridden bodies that had passed away. There's a gentleman, a sick gentleman, who got it all together and has been doing the cremation seva across all of India and has been brought in by the government to, to bring those bodies and give them the last rites. Him, his family, his team, all suffered through COVID. Having given some of those examples of the Sikh community, if you are unaware of who the Sikhs are, I want to just shed a light, and you can Google it, you can do everything that you want, you can ask me, I would be more than happy to tell you about it. In our scriptures, there is a line that says, Ek pita, ek eske hambarak, tu mera kurhai. You are our guru, we are the children of that one God. That one God is our Father. We are the children of that universal God. So the path shown by Guru Nanak, the founder of Sikhi, was one of peace and unity. For all the religions of the world, he envisioned a fellowship of faith. His efforts were so, so far into the future that we're seeing it now for creating this atmosphere of world reconciliation and amity. It was so, so way ahead of his time. Our gurus 
in, in our knowledge and, and we go deep into the understanding, the things that they did of equality, that we all sit down and eat together, there is no um, who one of us is better, who's good, who's bad, there's none of that. We're all equal. In Bansi, the Ransan, too, there's another line. Adal Allah, Nuhi Kaya, Kudrat Ke Sarbande. First, Allah created the light. Then, by His creative power, He made mortal beings. Ek Murte, Sab Jag Rupjaya, Kaun Pale Kumunde. From the one light, the entire universe was created. So who is good and who is bad? If we are all from one, and we have the one creator in all of us, any one celebration is a celebration for all of us. So Ramadan is a time of spiritual growth where Muslims worldwide partake in fasting, prayer, and reflection. The Sikh Sangat, the community, the Sikh community of Monroe, wish all our Muslim brothers and sisters Ramadan Mubarak and hope this period is full of spiritual growth, love, respect, success, and blessings. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral, for that wonderful, wonderful, uh, I can't believe that that was spur of the moment. It felt massively, massively well prepared. Thank you very much for that. Uh, it is now my pleasure to invite uh, our own Senator, Linda Greenstein. She has served as a member of the New Jersey Senate from 2010 and uh, is an old resident of Monroe and a friend of Muslims for Peace. I invite Senator Linda Greenstein. Please. It's wonderful to be here tonight. I want to thank you very much for inviting me and the Abdi family as well, um, who I've known for many years. And hello to Reverend Moore as well. <laughs> We've even done an op-ed or two together, haven't we, <laughs> um, over the years. So uh, I guess I was just looking up because I really had not, I didn't realize that I was speaking here tonight either. And I was looking up some things about peace. <laughs> And it is, in my religion, Judaism, a major um, factor. Um, I was just reading some interesting anecdotes about it. I mean, almost every other word is about peace, that we should seek peace in every way, and it can mean so many different things. And um, some of the, uh, the anecdotes were speaking about how even if people do a lot of things wrong, and God is looking down on them, and there's peace, he's willing to forgive all of those things. Uh, because uh, peace is really at the top in terms of being important. In a way, that sounds very trite, but it isn't. Obviously, it's, it's a, a very complicated process, as you've heard from all the speakers. It means different things to different people. But all of us have a sense of what it means, whether it's peace between um, people and God, whether it's peace between men and women together among themselves, all of those are important ways of looking at it. Um, and you know, when we see situations, all of us have also brought up the Ukraine, when we see situations like that, um, you think to yourself, it's amazing. There's really no way to conceive of people who could do things like the Russians are doing, they seem to have no concept of peace whatsoever. They had a nation next to them that was peaceful, going about its business. You see the buildings that are destroyed. They're ancient buildings that have so much meaning. And they just come in and destroy. That way of thinking is something that I think most of us, certainly in this room, would not be able to understand. It's alien to us. Um, and that's why we need gatherings like this. And I want to commend Muslims for Peace for effectuating a gathering like this. Because uh, we need all kinds of groups to gather, and you've brought together 
you know, Christians and Jews and, and as well as Muslims today. And we should keep doing this. We should keep meeting. We should keep getting to know each other because the more we get to know each other, the more all the barriers break down. And you want to have peace in those situations. If you're a good person, I think there are exceptions like Putin and, and his followers, but I think most people, when they get to know other people, the barriers do break down and we do want to have peace. So I say just keep doing these gatherings, keep talking about these issues, um, and making sure that we open eyes. I think the eyes are opened in this room, but we certainly need to bring that into so many other corners of the universe. Uh, so I do commend you, and I want to thank you again for having me, and we'll all keep working toward peace. You know, one other thing that I, I do want to say that hasn't been mentioned here tonight, and actually I don't see it mentioned in the newspapers, and I think it's something you'll all relate to. I'm sure you've talked about it. Um, you know, when all of these things developed in the Ukraine, we all came together, we're saying how terrible this is. But one of the things that always bothered me was the things that happened in Syria. Um, what happened there is they had an, they have an evil person running that country. He was killing children um, and um, not much was done by the rest of the world. Now I will admit the rest of the world isn't doing a ton here in the Ukraine, but we're at least doing some things. And I felt like um, that situation in Syria, I'm not even sure what's happened to it at this point, but I do remember seeing a lot of suffering people and suffering children there. And I feel that, that maybe we all didn't do enough there as well. So we have to look at all parts of the world and uh, make sure we do whatever um, we can. Thank you so much.